The strongest devil fruit in One Piece has just been revealed. Quite literally as well. It's the strong, strong fruit, which sounds kind of men simple, but this fruit, this fruit is not to be underestimated. Nor is the entire suite of new devil fruits that have just been revealed to us. With these, the Blackbeard pirates are on a whole new level of power, Doc Q especially. That fruit fries my brain. But let's break all of these fruits down and figure out just how truly screwed we really are. Beginning with Burgess, he possesses the aforementioned strong, strong fruit, which does exactly what it says on the tin and makes makes our alleged wrestling champion absurdly physically stronger. I say alleged wrestling champion because we have yet to find out exactly where and when he won his belt. I mean, far be it from me to accuse the Blackbeard Pirates of lying, but you know, I wouldn't put it past them. But Burgess's fruit falls into an established subclass of Paramecia fruits, which is body manipulation. And I know that probably doesn't make things very clear because that's what most Paramecia fruits are. But it actually has a sub subclass of fruit being that it manipulates the body without actually morphing the body shape itself. Think fruits like the Kilo Kilo or Tontonomi, which allow their users to precisely change their weight. That seems to be what's happening with Burgess. His body doesn't morph into anything, but its properties are tweaked to allow him to chuck mountains at polar bears. The first thing I thought about with the strong, strong fruit was actually Mad Monk Rouge. He has the currently unnamed devil fruit that allows him to convert physical damage taken into strength, which kind of makes him the natural counter to Burgess in a strictly punch fighting sense. Because so long as Arouge can tank Burgess's attack, he can just throw it right back with his karmic retribution. I don't know if it'll ever happen, but that would be an amazing fight to watch as the ultimate slugfest. Or if they ever formed an alliance, they would be a very good duo. Burgess injects Arouche with some damage and then all of a sudden, bam, we have two of the world's strongest attacks available. If Jesus Burgess were a global economy, we would have just doubled his GDP right there. I've seen some people say that they're a bit disappointed by the simple nature of the fruit, because to be fair, a lot of fruits that are similar to this have had honestly quite poor showings in the series, like the aforementioned Kilo Kilo and Ton Ton No Mi, they were meh. But when it comes to Burgess, I don't think we need anything more complex. He's a brawler, and so anything that enhances his natural skills is what is going to make his fights more interesting. You'll actually notice that all of the Blackbeard Pirates have been given fruits that specifically enhance their existing skills, which is fascinating and terrifying. It also reminds me of Boa Hancock's Merimerinomi, a fruit that has a solid natural match and may not be as great in the hands of just any old pirate person. I don't think that just anyone can eat this fruit and then throw a mountain. It likely has a limitation of increasing the base strength of the user by a certain amount. So if say Nami were to eat it, maybe she could use its max power to throw a ship or something, but Burgess is able to access a whole different tier of this fruitcake. One question I do have is how Haki interacts with a power like this. Like does an opponent using Haki negate the added strength that Burgess gains? I think probably not. Because despite what we've recently seen with people using Haki as a pure counter to certain fruit powers, generally it doesn't affect the inbuilt nature of body manipulation. Like if someone strikes Luffy with Haki, it doesn't stop him from stretching. It just allows him to take a big ol' ouchie. So with that in mind, Burgess actually becomes pretty damn formidable. The ultimate test of this theory would be to get him into a fight battle with Sentamaru, who through Haki is the world's greatest defense chunk. Now to be fair, it was Sentamaru himself who claimed that he not me, he had the world's greatest defense, so that could just be arrogance. I mean, Don Creek probably thought the same with his shiny golden armor. Gold, by the way, a notoriously fragile metal. So no wonder Creek's armor shattered so easily and left him with nothing but a solid golden shower. What I will say is that this new devil fruit makes it slightly more difficult to predict who Burgess will ultimately fight. And at the moment, I kind of want to say Frankie because they both have that chonky, loud and proud wrestler vibe happening. And I would love to see a matchup of Cyborg Man versus Man whose face currently caused plays as a cyborg. Now, speaking of that face, this fruit must be very new. There is no way that he had the strong, strong fruit when he fought Sabo and Dressrosa, right? Because when we see Burgess now, he's acting like a kid playing with his new toy. So I think that this is a very recent addition, which means that we probably shouldn't look forward to the prospect of many awakenings within the Blackbeard Pirates, just because they're also new and inexperienced with their powers. But we have found our ultimate tank. Burgess now ensures that most opponents can't really take a head on fight, which leaves them with two options, run, or hide. And Blackbeard, well, he has those covered as well. Moving to Van Alga, he probably has my favorite new power, the Warp Warp Fruit, which obviously bears at least one striking similarity to Trafalgar Law's Devil Fruit. But right now, I would say it's much closer to the idea of the Toki Toki no Mi, in that its core function is to move people from the place it is where they are now to the place it is that they are currently not. Absolutely perfectly suited to Van Alga. At first, I did wonder why this fruit was given to him, but it's because he has those all important sniper eyes. He can see far enough into the 
distance to accurately warp someone as far as possible. Plus he probably has one of the best masteries of observation Haki on the crew, which may go some way towards explaining Blackbeard's absurd series timeline right now because he keeps popping up all over the world in very, very quick succession. He was on Hachinosu in the New World, then Amazon Lily in the Calm Belt, and now suddenly he's all the way back in the New World somewhere around Wano. It is ridiculous how fast he can move, and maybe it's because Van Alga can activate the One Piece world equivalent of budget warp speed. Again, it suits him perfectly though, because to quote Usopp from One Piece Stampede, the sniper's role is to support the captain. And in a fight, Van Alga is probably always going to remain at a distance anyway. But now, even if someone does get close enough to him, all he needs to do is pop them away. Van Alga is pretty much untouchable. And right now I feel like Usopp is the only one really capable of dealing with him because nobody else can fight from the sheer amount of distance that he can. So hopefully what this means is that in the future, we are going to see some sort of fantastic sniper battle. Now we should probably talk about the room in the room. This route takes one feature from the Opi Opi no Mi and enhances it. Orga can teleport people away without creating massive rooms and thus also not needing to sacrifice massive lives. So in terms of a single feature, it is a clear improvement of the Opi Opi no Mi, which is, <laughs> well, that's a problem because that is by far the most useful feature of Law's fruit. I imagine there have to be some limitations of the fruit, such as maybe something distance based, like a certain amount of warp units or something even more insane by being limited to how far Van Alka can physically see in any given direction. But it also may be limited by exactly what it is that Van Alga can warp. To date, we've only seen him warp living things. There was Burgess and also look, we didn't actually see this happen, but I would like to think that Van Alga also warped Blackbeard onto the back of Stronger. It could certainly be a size thing as well. Perhaps the bigger the object or person, the less distance it is that Alga can warp them. So warping the large stack of meat that is Burgess can go several kilometers away, but maybe something like a battleship could only travel a few hundred meters. Also weirdly enough, he may be limited by consent because otherwise why not just warp the heart pirates to him instead of sending people after them? Law, yeah, he might be immune, but the rest of them, surely not. I guess in the end, it doesn't really matter because either way, Van Alga's fruit ensures that opponents cannot run. With him around, the Blackbeard pirates will always, always, always be able to catch you. So you can't fight, you can't run, Run. Can you hide? Also no. Because Doc Q has entered the ring with what is probably the most fascinating new power, the Sick Sick Fruit. Right now I'm assuming this fruit is Paramecia. It's tricky though, because unlike the other two, it doesn't necessarily have an existing similar equivalent. The closest I can get is maybe Jewelry Bonnie's fruit, which afflicts targets with a physical condition, morphing their bodies according to the option she has, or maybe even Jola's fruit, which transforms people into very questionable modern art. But both of those fruits have very strict parameters. Bonnie can age you up and down and back up again. And Jola, well, Jola, all Jola can do is make you a big F off mess. But the way Doc Q used the sick, sick fruit with that whole novel feminization disease may indicate that these conditions are limited to his imagination. Imagination is, is probably the wrong word, actually. Let's say limited to Doc Q's knowledge. Because despite how he looks, which is very homeless chic, perhaps even derelict, Doc Q is actually a medical expert and has a particularly strong knowledge base in the world of chemistry. So I guess what I'm suggesting is that if Doc Q understands the biological needs to inflict a certain condition, then perhaps he can just conjure that condition. Gender swapping in particular is very old news in One Piece. And even though Ivankov uses a devil fruit to accomplish it, it does still have a basis in fictional science. It's not the magical fruit that gives or takes the breasts away. It's the hormones that the magical fruit generates. And Doc Q did encounter Ivankov during the Impel Down arc, female form Ivankov as well. So perhaps he caught a glimpse of the fruit in action, came up with a scientific hypothesis-y thing, and then used that to conjure his own new disease that replicates the effect. In general though, it is just terrifying to have a fruit like this in the hands of Doc Q. His epithet is the Grim Reaper, and now he has a power that almost literally turns him into the plague horseman of the apocalypse. In terms of limitations, the fruit could function as a bit of a patient zero system, as in Doc Q can only infect one target and the disease needs to spread naturally from there. In the case of recent events, that one target would be Law, and as soon as he beat it, the infection dissipated in everyone else as well. However, there is something that I am quite excited for here. There is a lot of potential with a dude who can more or less just imagine diseases into existence, which is that Doc Q could potentially bring some or even all of Usopp's lie diseases to life, such as the I can't go on this island or I'll die disease. Usopp is not a liar. Usopp is a prophet. He is our own personal Nostradamus and Oda cannot, he just cannot miss this opportunity in the future. It is just too good. It's also hard to ignore the obvious here that Doc Yu is like 99.9% .9 being set up as an opponent for Chopper to deal with. And in a weird way, defeating Doc Yu is, uh, it's kind of like achieving Chopper's dream of curing all disease. But you can't fight because of Burgess, you can't run because of Van Alga, and now you can't hide because of Doc Q. The Blackbeard Pirates are doing something that really no other prominent crew is 
done before. They are specifically acquiring new powers that make them stronger together. Crews in this series usually focus more on individual power to be showcased in one-on-one -on -one situations. Even the Straw Hats, the teamiest of teams, are still very 1v1 based. So for Blackbeard of all people to be understanding the importance of teamwork is a pretty wild twist. And it really makes me want whatever this final fight is going to be to be a team battle, where all the Straw Hats have to work together to defeat all of the Blackbeard pirates. And also, we still have yet to touch on the most important member of the crew, Stronger. I I just cannot believe that Stronger is now a mythical Devil Fruit user. He is now in the same class as Kaido, as Luffy, and Marco, and Sengoku. I mean, look, the mythical Zoan class does have its disappointments, like say Orochi, and also its casual cool animal friends, like say Onimaru, but it goes to show that Stronger is a valued member of the crew. No he may not be one of the Titanic captains, although perhaps he should be, but a mythical Pegasus Zoan fruit was given to this horse as opposed to any other member of Blackbeard's entire fleet. Now, just to avoid some potential confusion here, yes, we have seen a Pegasus in the series before. His name was Pierre, but he did the exact opposite to Stronger. Pierre is a skybird who ate a basic horse Zoan fruit and thus became a polka-dotted Pegasus, as you do. In form alone, I should say, because mythical Zoans always come with all sorts of weird, funky bonus powers. And I can't even begin to speculate on exactly what Stronger can do, because there are just too many variations of Pegasus abilities across human history, but rest assured, he is more than just a flying horse. And rest even more assured, because here's another fantastic One Piece video to watch while you do whatever, whatever it is you do.